Howdy, and welcome to this judge's orientation video for the District 12 4-H Food Show, specifically the Senior Division. As a judge for the District 12 4-H Food Show, there's some very important things that we need to consider when evaluating senior 4-H members. So what are we judging? Part of the evaluation process includes an evaluation of the project experience and the selection of their actual recipe. Within project experience, we look at leadership, community service, knowledge and skills, project activities, and goals. However, that is the information that's included on a form that the seniors turn in prior to the actual food show. Those two main items, the form, which includes their leadership, community service, knowledge and skills, project activities, goals, and the selection of their recipe, are the first two sections of the scorecard, and both of those have already been judged by the time they get to the food show. So you won't really have to worry about evaluating this portion of their food show entry. What we are judging when they arrive at the food show is their communication skills. We're also evaluating their knowledge and skills in the following areas. We're evaluating their knowledge of foods, nutrition, preparation, use of ingredients, the dietary guidelines, and specifically my plate, which has changed recently from my pyramid to my plate, food safety, and of course dietary lifestyle changes. So those are areas within the interview that we should be evaluating them for. We're also evaluating the dish itself. So what do we look for? We look for appearance and appeal. And of course, we look for the quality of the dish. Some things to consider in relation to the above. The selection of the ingredients, the arrangement, the arrangement of the dish or its presentation, and freshness, within reason, of course, considering that some of these dishes have been sitting a while as they traveled to the food show and while they were waiting to be judged. If we look a little closer at appearance and appeal, a couple of things we want to look at is, of course, the arrangement, how they choose to arrange the food on the dish, platter or plate, and of course garnishing. An important thing to remember about garnishing is all garnishes must be edible. Now that doesn't include a bowl or a dish or something they might include in the plate to hold a sauce or a dip, but it's important to note that garnishing on any plate should be edible. In terms of quality, we want to look at the texture of the food, the temperature, is it a hot dish? Keeping hot foods hot, cold foods cold. Keep in mind that they've been sitting a while, but you can still evaluate whether or not that dish is still warm or cold relative to when they got there and when they presented the dish in the display area, exhibit area. We also want to look at aroma. You can smell the food. Uh, and certainly the appearance of the food. Does it look appealing? Another major area that we're evaluating is communication. Can the 4-H member speak clearly? Do they maintain good eye contact with the judges? There may be a room of three or four judges. And maintaining eye contact with them individually is good, but not if they're staring at the wall or the floor or their hands or seem distracted. They should be focused on you as a judge and their dish. Posture and movement are very important in evaluating their communication skills. One very important thing to remember about the interview is at the beginning of every senior 4-H food show interview is a three minute presentation given by that 4-H member. In that interview, they should introduce themselves, they should introduce their recipe and the preparation of that recipe. They should discuss any project activities. They should discuss any special learning experiences that they had during this food show experience or food and nutrition project experience. Leadership activities. Were they involved as a leader in any food and nutrition project? What kind of career options have they explored as a result of their food and nutrition project? And of course, any dietary lifestyle choices that they've explored. On the scorecard, the communication is split up into three areas. Voice, poise, and presentation. 
you can see that communication skills is worth 15 points. So as you evaluate their communication skills, know that you're evaluating them only on this 15 point scale with five points attributed to each of those three criteria. As we look at the interview, we know that we've evaluated some of their knowledge, skills, leadership, service through their written form. However, it's also important for us to evaluate certain criteria from the interview. These are the criteria that we use to evaluate their interview. We want to be able to evaluate their experiences. So we need to ask a question, and I'll cover questions a little bit later. We'll be asking a question related to their experiences in the Food and Nutrition Project what knowledge they gained this year during the Food and Nutrition Project. Preparation principles. What are some important things they learned in the preparation of their dish? The ingredients. Nutrients. Not only nutrients, but what those nutrients do for the body. The dietary guidelines. Recognizing that we're using my plate instead of my pyramid. Calorie and serving sizes. Food safety. And dietary and lifestyle choices. Unlike junior and intermediate 4-H members. A senior 4-H member should know basic information of all of these areas that should come out in their interview about not only their specific entry or their dish, but general purpose knowledge in each of these areas about other foods, other dishes, other ingredients, and other scenarios where they have to evaluate food safety, ingredients, calorie and serving sizes. So it's really important for them to demonstrate that they have a broader knowledge of these areas than per se their junior intermediate counterparts. As we look at the scorecard, you can see how all of that is evaluated in the scorecard. The interview is worth 45 points with only five points attributed to each one of these in particular criteria. So keep in mind that we have to attribute no more than five points to each criteria. Unlike the junior and intermediate 4-H members participating in the food show, the senior 4-H members are asked questions that are not necessarily available for them to study ahead of time. This goes in support of the idea that they should have a general knowledge within each of those other criteria mentioned previously about not only their dish but other foods in general. As a result, you will use a list of questions provided by the contest superintendent for you to evaluate each of those criteria. Those questions will not be disclosed until the day of the event. Those questions should be asked to all of the 4-H members in the senior division that you're evaluating as a judge. So you'll ask the same questions. You'll ask about their dish. You'll ask about the preparation. And it's very important for you to focus on them, their experience in their dish. However, they should have basic knowledge of food and nutrition outside of their own dish that they prepared for this event. Some key points to remember. Give them your full attention. Stay within your time limits. And don't try to stump them with a trick question or a difficult or unclear question. You may certainly ask questions of each of the participants. Keep in mind that you should ask the same question to each of the participants when they come into the judging room. We talked earlier about evaluating the food. There's two criteria that we'll be evaluating, which includes the appearance and the appeal, and the quality. On the scorecard, that's worth 10 points. Each one is worth 5. So it's very important that we attribute only the allowed points for that specific criteria. Here's some other key points. Here's some things you do want to do as a judge for the district food show. Be focused on them. That is the most important thing. Minimize any distractions. Use positive and constructive comments. Very, very important to be consistent in the way you evaluate each of the 4-H members that comes in your category. Some may be very strict with the way they award points. Others may be more lenient. Do not worry about how your judging partner may be judging 4-H members that are coming in. The important thing is that you be consistent with your own scores across all of the 4-H members that you're evaluating. If you're not familiar with the rules, you can go to the 4-H website, download the rules, and review those prior to coming to the event. It's also important for you to familiarize yourself with the scorecard. That, too, is available on the 4-H website. If you have any questions or problems or concerns, please don't interrupt the 4-H member during their interview to ask the superintendent a question. Wait till after the interview 
and they'll be glad to help you with any questions you may have. Stay on schedule. In order for us to have a successful food show, it's very important that you stay on schedule. The superintendents will be keeping track of time and they will help and guide you how quickly you need to move from contestant to contestant. And finally, have fun. It's contagious. If you're having fun, the kids will pick up on that. The 4-H members will enjoy themselves in the interview. They'll feel more comfortable. So please help us in that respect. Here's some things that you don't want to do as a judge. They're already nervous, so don't make them any more nervous than they already are. Don't get distracted. Focus on them. Don't write comments until they leave. You'll have an allotted amount of time, albeit brief, two to three minutes, to write comments on every score sheet. But wait until the person leaves the room or is done with their interview for you to write comments. Very important is to not over or undervalue judging criteria. We've discussed this during this orientation, but it's very important for you to go back, look at the scorecard, and not attribute more points to a specific criteria than what is allotted for on the scorecard. Some of us prefer certain foods over other foods. So don't let personal preferences pre prevail in terms of recipe selection, the type of food that they've chosen, or the dish that they've presented. Very important, don't taste any of the food. Some of this food has been traveling to the event and it has also been sitting in the exhibit area for some time before it makes it into the judging room. Please do not taste any of the food. And don't forget, it's all about them. Two final points. Please be there early in preparation for the event. And once the judging is complete, please wait until all the results have been completed. Thank you very much for your support of the 4-H program, and thank you so much for your interest and involvement in the Food and Nutrition Project.